It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? <laughs> I don't I don't have any children, so I never know where my children are. But it's 10 p.m. on a Sunday night, and that means we just finished watching one of my favorite TV shows on all television. Oh, it's the last season, and we're two episodes in, and it's starting to get good. So why don't you pull up chair, man, take a seat. We're getting ready to dive into a uh, spoiler-filled uh, episode two of season eight. Eight of Game of Thrones. That's right, it is 10 o'clock on a Sunday. Just finished watching the second episode of the final season. And I tell you, I, you figured with only six episodes left that you might get into stuff a little bit quicker. Uh, last year, certainly, very, very quick pace as we kind of trudged through a lot of stuff very quickly. And you see here, th they must have listened to like some of the things the fans are saying, man. Because they, they've slowed it back down, man. They're telling the story. They're giving us the moments that we need to get and have and like get to enjoy before a lot of things are gonna gonna go down, man. I mean, we're about to have a huge battle at Winterfell, and almost all of our favorite main characters are all at Winterfell. You gotta think we're probably gonna lose at least half of them. Um, so I appreciate the fact that the show is taking its time early on here, and I tell you, they're really building quite nicely. Where it's like, okay, now we've in episode one, we reintroduced to everybody, you know, like who is in the show, where we are, let the characters kind of reintroduce and see themselves all over again. And now two, we're setting up, we're building, we're talking about what, what the game plan is, is as, as the whites move our way. And we got a lot to get into in this episode. Um, It's funny, like they packed a lot in here. I have so many notes. Um. But it, it, they did it in a way where it didn't feel like any one scene was rushed. I felt like we got a lot of big scenes in this episode. So let's crack into episode two of season eight. And we start, of course, right at the beginning um, with Jamie's, I don't want to call it a trial, but like, you know, they kind of bring him into where, you know, last we saw Sansa give a trial to Peter Baelish, um, you know, to kind of be like, what are you doing here? And, you know, we kind of see that like, he's like, look, Cersei never planned on sending anybody. Um, you know, she lied to all of us and I wasn't going to do that. And when Brienne steps up, you know, that, you know, it's kind of looks like Danny and Sansa are kind of in line, which by the way, Danny and Sansa, we get, we'll get to that in a couple minutes. Um, oh my gosh. Are they just looking fierce? Their style, man. So, the, the outfit Sansa's putting on, man. She's like trying to like almost one up Danny be like, yo, I can hang. <laughs> I can hang. And they have a really nice moment. But at the beginning of this episode, they certainly look in line. Uh, and then Lady Brienne steps up and is like, look, I, I was charged with bringing Sir Jamie back. We we've been, you know, places together. I know he's an honorable man. He's a man of his word. Um, you know, Sansa, you're only alive because he charged me to go find you and bring you home. And, you know, when Sansa hears that, she's like, look, I trust you wholeheartedly. And she even tells Danny later on, she trusts Brienne more than anybody. And when she says... Jamie's okay. Sansa's like, well, then we'll be glad to have him. You know, and then Danny's like, and the Warden of the North? And he's like, we need every man we get. I keep saying, we need every man we're going to get, man. <laughs> we're going up against the dead. Um, so it was a nice way to start the episode, though. And it's uh, they've done a really excellent job, especially this episode. The way they're able to position all of these characters. I mean, we have a ton of our favorite characters all in one place. And they're all getting screen time and moments. Uh, and you see that throughout the whole thing. Um, you know, following that, we get a little Jamie and Tyrion action. You know, where they're constantly having, you know, their brother, uh, brotherly type conversations. And they're talking about Cersei. Um, and, you know, Tyrion's like, man, I, you know, I never thought that, you know, dying at Winterfell by, by an army of the dead would be the way I'd go. You know, he's like, you know, I always imagined I'd be 80, you know, in bed with a belly full of wine and a woman on my cock. And, you know, Jamie's right there and he says the whole thing. Is, We've heard Tyrion say that a bunch of time. They have a nice laugh. Um, but then, you know, Tyrion gets a little serious before getting another nice laugh where he's like, you know, maybe, maybe I get torn apart by, by whites and... Then when they go south, and then I get to tear apart Cersei, but, but you know, he laughs and Jamie by this point is turned around because he's eyeing up Lady Brienne. We get a lot of tense, fiery eye contact between Jamie and Brienne this episode, and we get a really, really awesome moment with them. But I, you know, I always love seeing Jamie and Tyrion interact. Um, then we had the, that moment I was telling you about, man. Sansa and Danny in one room at one, uh, you know, just alone together. You know, Danny kind of is talking to Jorah, and he's like, you know, I got like, he's like, I trust Tyrion. Yes, Tyrion took the hand. A title that, you know, when I heard he had broke my heart. But he, he earned it. He's a smart man. And he's like, but I got one other thing, too. And clearly telling him, like, you got to try to even it out with Sansa if we're going to pull this all off. And she does, man. She comes in and just kind of, like, talking to Sansa. Like, I, I want to be on the same page. And, like, what happened with Jamie? I thought we were in the same place. And, you know, that's where Sansa kind of said, I, I trust Brienne wholeheartedly. And they had this nice conversation. And, and it's funny because, like I said, their outfits, man, are 
fierce. Are you getting fierce, Sansa, man? That black leather dress was crazy. And you're like, power Sansa is in the room. And you feel it, man. You feel like she has earned her power at this point. And she is not afraid to, to, to kind of share that. And it's nice. Like, her and Danny are having this wonderful moment. Like, oh, you know, they're, they're kind of seeing eye to eye. And, you know, and Sansa's like, what about the North? And Danny's like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, you become, you know, queen. You're sitting on your throne. What about the North? We refuse to kneel. We'll never do it again. So what about the North? And Danny's like, yo. And I love watching, like, those chess battles go on in this show and it was a really nice one man it was well written and you felt it the whole scene you're just like these are two very powerful women in one room at one time and it's kind of cool to see Sansa get to that place where you feel like she's powerful enough to sit in a room and kind of go lady he lady with Danny and I really I liked that scene a lot um uh, I love that, you know, finally, you know, a lot of the battles we've seen uh, throughout the course of the show get referenced at some point or another. We got our first reference to the Battle of the Bastards uh, when Davos brings it up and gets brought up again later on when Tyrion's kind of talking about all the battles everybody has survived. Um, so it was nice to hear that. Um, and, you know, then you get this other moment with Davos with this little girl who's got a burn. And as soon as I saw her, I immediately thought of Shireen, um, you know, because Shireen had the, the, the grayscale scars on her face. And as soon as you see that, you're like, oh, Davos has got to melt a little bit for this girl. And he's like kind of giving her some soup. He's like, she's like, where can I go? She's like, I'm ready to fight. And he's like, you, you go down to the crypt where it's safe. He's like, no, my, my brother, my dad, they're fighting. I want to fight too. And he's like, well, we've got to protect the crypt. You know, like it's the most important place. Everybody's there. She's like, well, then I'll protect the crypt. It's, oh, just such a, like, I love that everybody in this episode gets a moment where you're just like, that's a nice moment. Because <laughs> a lot of not nice moments are coming. So I, it was nice to give Davos kind of something like that when he never got to say goodbye to Shireen. It was kind of just like a nice little moment for him to have with this little girl of Winterfell um, that I kind of really dug. You know, and then, we, then we kind of swing from Davos and we see but our group from Eastwatch. Um, you know, you got Tormund, you got Ed and his Nightwatch brothers, and you got uh, Sir Barrick still kicking. Um, they've now come down and gotten to Winterfell before uh, the Whites and the Army of the Dead. And, and what I, I didn't piece together last week, they were actually at last half uh, the Umber's home. And the boy up on the wall was Little Umber. I One of those things where you're watching and you don't pick up on everything. And I was like, oh, man. So that's why things weren't destroyed. We were never at Eastwatch. Um, so, boom, there you go, man. Seaman was a little bit wrong last week. But you learn that, you know, and fit, kind of put that together. I also rewatched last week. And it was like, oh, this is all the pieces. So they actually are coming from last half. Um, and then they kind of go around the Army of the Dead and get to John and tell him, like, Got like a day and a half-ish. Like we basically have like a half day day left before the, they're here. Um, and then we get this awesome war council uh, meeting where everybody is in the room. You know, we kind of had everybody in the room for Jamie's bit, but you're not really seeing everybody here. You're seeing everyone is gathered around the table. John's laying everything out. Like this is what we have numbers wise. This is what the army of the dead is. And he kind of talks about the Night King. And just raise the dead and they fight for him. And they'll do anything, basically, that he wants them to. Um, so the only thing they can do is try to lure him out. And Jamie's like, they'll never let him get anywhere anywhere in the open if that's the case. Like, you know, if they've come this far, you know, they're, they're not going to let that happen. And Bran wheels on up and he's like, he'll come out for me. Everyone's like, well, why, why you? He's like, he's been coming after the Three-Eyed Raven for years and years and years. And finally, that little motivation of what it is about Bran that he wants so badly. He's like, the Night King wants to end everything. He wants to erase everything. And I am the world's memories. And I was like, oh, that is such, it's a great line. Um, and something I never put together. Like, holy cow, yeah, that would be why he wants him. He wants to end everything. And Bran is the one that can remember everything, including who the Night King was before. Which I think at some point in this season we're going to get back into when I think him and Bran are going to have some kind of showdown. Uh, we'll get a little bit more on the Night King. But that would make a lot of sense, man. He wants to wipe the world of everything, including his own origin. And Bran holds all those memories. Now, so Bran, willing to be the bait, and he says, let me go out to the God's Wood. Um, and I'll, I'll hang out there. It's inside the walls, but it'll be separate enough where maybe he'll come out. And who steps up to the plate to help defend Bran but Theon Greyjoy? I love 
all of these circular stories, man, where you get people at their their top, we get them at their worst. Uh, everybody has a good and a bad side, unless your name is like Jon Snow. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the thing that I've loved about Theon is they've really given him a way to get back and to kind of become himself again. And every chance he's gotten since coming back to try to do something honorable outside of fleeing his uncle when he caught his sister. He's now done and he comes back. He's like, I stole your home from you once, Bran. Let me fight for you now. And I was like, let's go, Theon. So him and the Ironborn will be in the Godswood with Bran. And, you know, you're starting to see the pieces of, like, where this battle could go. And this thing is going to be epic, man. Uh, But I love that whole bit. And we even end the scene, you know, in that kind of grim sense where it's like, you know, we're we're all going to die, most likely. Uh, You know, the odds are not with them. And Tormund says that flat out. You know, he goes... We're all going to die, but at least we'll die together. And he's looking right at Brienne. And he sees, he's, says he's come back. He's like, is the tall woman here? Uh, you know, he's been looking for Brienne. They have a couple wonderful interactions throughout the episode, both there at the War Council and later on as they're enjoying their last night, possibly last night ever. Um, you know, from there, like I said, we continue to get just lots of different scenes with lots of different people. Brandon and Tyrion kind of have a go, uh, you know, talking about, like, the last time that he was there. Um, and I liked watching their interaction. You see Masandi and Grey Worm kind of get a little go, like, you know, Grey Worm's like, we should get out of here. We survive all this. He's like, do you really want to live here? She's like, I'd love to see the beast. He's like, I'll go. and We'll defend you wherever you go, because that's what me and my people do. I was like... Grey Worm. So I love that we get, you know, that for, like, Grey Worm and Masandi. Like, we're not forgetting any of them. And then we get this wonderful little moment up top uh, with with John and Sam and Ed. And they're up on the top. You know, so John, you know, is talking to Sam. He's like, you know, little Sam and Gilly. He's like, you should go. Go go stay with them down in the crypts, you know. And Sam kind of gives him this. He's like, no, 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 like, protect them. Sam's like, has everybody forgotten that I'm the first one to kill a White Walker? Um, and they start talking. And Ed is like, and Samuel Tarley. Killer of White Walkers, lover of ladies. Do we need any other sign than that? Tells <laughs> that the end of the world was coming. I was like, <laughs> I love man, like the brotherhood that those three share. Um, it's so legitimate and so real. Like when you get those interactions with those three, um, in any facet, whether it's a one on one or all three of them are finally together in the same place, you just get the vibe. These three guys have been through a lot together, and they're totally brothers. And listening to them play around like that was really nice. Again, loving that these. These characters, these characters that we all love. Like I said, I was a little impatient last week. I wanted some battles. I think everybody wanted a battle this week. But these are these are characters that we really love, and we're going to lose a bunch of them, I think, next week. Um, so it is. It's nice that they're all getting these moments, and we're kind of getting to spend time with everybody, not just the big core, but everybody that's there. And that's another kind of nice moment where you get to see the group getting to kind of enjoy this episode a little bit. Um then we go back, uh, you know, now we're toward like the end of the episode. And you're basically establishing where everybody is on the last night at Winterfell. And it starts with Jamie and Tyrion. And they're sitting down, you know, having some wine and kind of, you know, talking. And in comes literally almost everybody. Rihan and Pod come in. Uh, you know, and, and you know, T- J- Tyrion's like, oh, you know, come, come on, have some wine. And Brienne's like, no, no, I'm good. Pod's like, you know, coming over. He's like... You know, I sure I'm in, you know, because he drink with Tyrion always, especially before battle. And Brienne's like, I don't think that's a good idea, Podrick. And he kind of looks at her like, come on. But, which, by the way, we see Podrick in this episode. My man has got a wonderful flow going on. <laughs> this guy, we learned something else about Podrick. We'll get to in a little bit, man. But this man has everything working for him right now, man. He earned a massive reputation uh, down in King's Landing. And now he might not have that reputation in the North, but... I think if he just does this, man, he could get that reputation real quick. Good for Pod, man. He, he's and he, he's he's kind of looking like he can fight, and he looks like a man finally. Uh, he comes in and you know kind of gives Brand this look like you know I've been to battle. Like let me, she's like give him a half cup, and you see Tyrion pour the whole thing and spill it over the 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 edge of the cup. It was really funny. They kind of look at each other and have this smile. And like I said, it's it, these first two episodes are all about moments and building. This, this, you can feel something is coming, but we're not there yet. And they, they, they kind of pull everything out and let these scenes breathe, even though there's a lot of them. Um, and you kind of get to enjoy this last night in Winterfell before things are going to get crazy. Um, and, and, you know, as that continues, you know, Davos comes in and Tormund comes in. And you get this whole collection um, just kind of sitting around. I was like sitting there. I was like, it's almost like the, the Knights of the Round Table in a way. Because uh, they're kind of sitting in a circle and they're sharing stories, you know, and they're kind of laughing and they're trying to... You know, find some sort of ease going into the last night. So Tyrion kind of gets up, and you know they've been talking about how there's a good chance they might not win. And Tyrion goes, "You know, I think we might survive. 
You know, he's like, think, I think we might live. Like, think about all the things that we've survived just in this room. And kind of starts listing off all the different battles or places people have been and come out of the back end. He says Sir Brienne at one point. And he's like, oh, you're not a sir. I'm sorry, Lady Brienne. And, you know, Tormund's like, she's a sir. You know, he's never been a knight. And she's like, I never wanted to be a knight. And Tormund's like, if I was a king, I would knight you all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Tormund makes you laugh so much in this episode. Um, like again, like I said, the laughs you need before we get to lose some big name people. Even with the laughs, this turns into the most emotional scene uh, of the entire episode. Uh, it's like the one and only time I had anything to react to. Um, but Jamie gets up and he goes, you know, anyone who's been knighted can knight somebody. He's like, I'll prove it to you right now. And Jamie proceeds to knight Brienne. If you don't believe that that scene got me, when well, you're about to see the scene, man cry. Like in the real slow build up and then just kind of let, uh, check it out. In the name of the warrior, I charge you to be brave. In the name of the father, I charge you to be just. In the name of the mother, I charge you to defend the innocent. Arise, Brienne of Tarth, a knight of the Seven Kingdoms. Like that's oh man, and like two months. I've been watching this show for like nine years. I told you, man. It got it got, it got me. It, it got because like, this is this is two people that that we've kind of seen interact with each other. Uh, you know when they've you know when Jamie's been at his lowest, or Brienne's been at hers, and, and when they were first put put together, you know you have this person in Brienne that you really kind of dig, and Jamie you don't. By the time their journey is over, you've kind of Jamie's kind of won the audience over, um, and you know they share this special connection that neither one will speak on, um, but their eyes say it all the time. And I think both of these people have some kind of a love for each other. Um, and watching Jamie knight her, I was done, done, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, man, it's so it's so beautiful. Like I, I was uh, that scene in and of itself made this episode of non fighting the dead. So worth it, man. It was just such a wonderful, moving, riveting uh, sequence. And it was something nice to just kind of get to savor and enjoy. Um, again, before we get into this massive battle, I like that Thrones is giving us the chance to enjoy some stuff with a lot of our favorite characters and getting to see things that, you know, we've hoped or wanted to see. Um, and then we get, <laughs> before that happens, I know, just speaking in the scene in general, that was the most emotional part. But we also got, like I said, my man Tormund makes you laugh a lot in this episode. Oh, man, he, he goes to the king killer. He's like, you know, we know why you got your name. He's like... They call me Giant Spain. Do you know why they call me Giant Spain? Because <laughs> I killed a giant when I was ten, and then I snuck into his wife's bed. When she woke, you know what happened? She let me suckle at her teat. She thought I was one of her children. It's like so. Like, I'm strong the way I am because I was raised on giant milk. <laughs> <laughs> he starts chugging this whole thing. He's talking to Brienne, trying to impress Brienne. And Brienne looks absolutely disgusted. So, so you get these two worlds of these two men that, that love Brienne. Um, you know, Tormund, who doesn't know her at all, just is like, I am infatuated with this woman. And, and Jamie, who knows her, and you see those two sequences, you know, and Tormund is just laying it all out there like he always does. And Jamie doing like the most honorable thing in the moment. Um, it was just wonderful to kind of watch that group interact, you know. Uh, like I said, we, we mentioned Pod again. Uh, Tyrion also goes, you know, like, does anybody know how to sing? Someone sing a song. And no one knows, you know, what to sing. You know, he looks at Tormund, Tormund's like, 
And then Pod just starts singing. He sings this wonderful song that's from the books. Um, I, when I watched the after the episode stuff, they kind of mentioned that the first verse was in the books, and then they kind of added some more. And just this wonderful bit. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, Pod, you got it all, man. Like you get, you, 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 the ladies love you. you. You got this hair that's just the, the flow is for real on Pod, man. You know, <laughs> he's like, you can fight. You're looking like a man these days, and you can sing like literally. Clearly, Padre could have any woman he wants on this show if he if he really tried. Um, but it was nice. It was cool that like, you see. Hey, yeah, man, I know Padre had such a great singing voice. Um, but it was it was nice to kind of see that group together. Uh, it was nice to see a lot of people that were kind of together toward the end. Um, you know, Arya and the Hound get another kind of nice moment together. And you know, while they're talking, you know, you kind of get this moment where like. You know, Arya is saying some stuff about the Hound. He's like, you know, she, what is this? You're like here now. Like you never fight for anybody but yourself. He's like, I fought for you. Um, and then Barrack shows up, and they kind of are all a little reminiscing a little bit. And Arya just kind of bounces, and the Hound's like, What are you doing? She's like, I'm not spending my last night with you miserable people. And Arya goes and gets her a Gendry. Oh my gosh, dude, it was great. Get like Arya's downstairs. Um, you know, she kind of comes to Gendry and Gendry's finally got her, 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 like her spear that he, he, she asked him to make. She had talked to him earlier in the episode and, you know, didn't have it. And he's, she's like, why are you making these things that like one aren't even that sturdy? Like make mine now. And she finally goes down there at the end and he has it. And uh, they kind of just had this nice little interaction. And all of a sudden Arya like starts asking him about like, you know, the red woman. And he kind of tells her what happened there. And she's like, so you've had the red woman? He's like, I didn't sleep with the red woman. He's like, but you've had women. And you're like, oh, man, is Arya trying to find out if he's a virgin? She's, she's he's like, you know, he's like playing it down. She's like, you know exactly how many women you've been with. How many is it? Is it? And she's like, three. She gives him this look, man. I was like, oh, my gosh, they're going to let Arya go after this, man. I was like, good for Arya. Um, and she looks at him. She's like, you know, I, I've been through a lot of things, you know, in, in, in the life that I've had. Um, but, but I have never experienced that. And before possibly my last night, I want to, and Gendry's like, what? And she just goes in on it. And you're like, are oh, like, I'm t it's my favorite character on the show. Like, like episode after episode, man, you just like fall in love with how badass Arya is. And to just see her go after, I mean, episode one, all anybody wanted to talk about was Arya and Gendry. How steamy just them in the same scene at any given time was, man. Like after all those years apart, um, you know, waiting to get back to that. Everyone was just like rooting for Arya and Gendry. Well, we got Arya and Gendry. You got a lot more Arya than I was expecting. Oh, man. As Maisie Williams was like, all, all these years growing up, watching all these women get to have like their, you know, sexual love kind of scenes. And I'm out here killing people at like eight. <laughs> they gave her a, a almost full scene. I was like, whoa. I, not ready for that. But I was, I was very, very happy for Arya. Um, you know, I, you can check that reaction as well. We're probably going to die soon. Okay, Arya. I ought to know what it's like before that happens. Yes. Arya. Get it, Arya! <laughs> like I said, man, I, anything that my girl Arya wants to do, I wholeheartedly support her. And she does. She's just at a point where she's like, I'm in charge of my own life, and I will take what I want, whether that's a life or... Well, that's a Gendry. <laughs> I'm going to take it. Uh, like I said, we're getting these really nice moments for characters that we love. Um, and getting to see character moments that maybe they want and get to have earned at this point. And, you know, Arya's now a full woman. She's earned that uh, at this point in the show. So I was like, good for Arya. Um, and then we get another wonderful reunion that we kind of got a, a taste of before Danny dropped the hammer on poor Sam. Now we got just Sam and Jorah to interact. And Sam comes up to Jorah kind of bearing a gift. Um, Jon Snow had once tried to give Jorah Mormont his, his sword that belonged to his family back. And Jorah said no when they were on the other side of the wall last season. And now Sam welcomes and he's like, look, your dad was a great man. He taught me a lot about honor and made me an honorable and brave man. Um, and, and this belonged to my family, um, you know, but I can't wield it. They just kind of have this moment where, you know, Jorah's like, you know, you still do have like a family name to live on. I was kind of disowned or whatever. And he's like, I can barely lift the thing. He's like, it's Valyrian steel. And he gives it to Jorah. And you're just like, <gasps> and then I immediately went, oh, wait. So, wait, we got Valyrian steel in the house. We've got Jorah's got a Valyrian steel sword now. Jon's got a Valyrian steel sword. Arya's got a Valyrian steel dagger. Um, Lady Brienne, or now Sir Brienne, has uh, a Valyrian sword. And I believe that's Joffrey's Valyrian sword. So, I think Jamie still has his. So, all five Valyrian weapons 
are in one place toward the end. Uh, we're gonna we, we can see five different people next week kill a white or a white walker. Um, well, I guess we could see a lot of people who do it because of all the dragon glass. But of the Valyrian steel swords, we could see all five Valyrian steel weapons in play next week, uh, which could be pretty cool. Um, so it was kind of nice, and it was again one of those things you forget. Like I forgot Sam's you know, family sword was also Valyrian steel. So it kind of reminds you. And it, boom, like I said, as soon as you heard the word, it was like, wait, we're, <gasps> they're all there. And then, oh, we end with, with the two people that, that are like the most powerful people in the room at any given time. Two of the biggest fan favorites for the Iron Throne. Hadn't talked about them all episode, it feels like. John and Danny. Um, John's down in the crypts, uh, standing in front of what we now know is his mother's tomb. Uh, you know, standing in front of Liana's statue uh, down in the crypts. And Danny comes down, and John, John and Danny have a couple interactions, like earlier on, and where they were steamy and fun that first episode. John's kind of cold to Danny because he knows that he's the rightful, like heir to the throne. He has this information, doesn't know what he's gonna do. We don't know what he's gonna do with it. Um, and Danny kind of comes down to try to address that, like you know, it was last night, like you know, whatever. And she kind of asks, she's like, who, who's, who's, you know, tomb is this? And he's like, oh, is you know, Liana Stark. Um, and starts kind of talking about it, you know, mentions her name, and Danny immediately goes, Rhaegar. She's like, oh my gosh, Rhaegar. Like, you know, and this is just a family member at this point to Danny. That's all she knows. She's, she's kind of like, if, if John knew something about Liana, like, okay, whatever, I'll try to console him, try to comfort him. And she's like, you know, Rhaegar, they said he was a good man, you know, and that he, he loved, and, and, you know, he raped her. And John's just like, he didn't. And Danny's like, huh? John lays it all out there. I wasn't sure John was going to do that before we got into any of the battles. I wasn't sure John was going to do it at all because I've never thought that John wanted the throne. But he does. He lays it all out there. He's like, you know, I'm Aegon Targaryen, like the rightful heir to the throne. She's like, you're the last male Targaryen. You have a claim to the throne. And right as they're about to have that moment. And you're like, oh, man, like, here we go. Like, John's about to be like, no, I don't want it. Um, like, it's it's yours. I won't challenge you. You know, because you're kind of feeling this tension. I was talking about this with my mom and my family before the episode. Like, if if he says something, he now becomes someone who's in her way. Like, would Danny take him out? And you're having this big moment. And then, and, uh, you know, they immediately head on up. And we see that the, uh, you know, the, the armies are coming. And we get this wonderful bit where, like I said, we heard Podrick singing. They're kind of doing, like, this nice little montage. And you see, like... Sam spending the last night there with Gilly and little Sam. And you see Grey Worm kiss Masandi. Um, you know, they're kind of just showing where everybody is. And uh, you see that Sansa and uh, Theon are eating kind of soup together or whatever. And they're kind of looking at each other longingly. And me and Mom are sitting there like, are they bringing Theon and, and Sansa together? And you're like, you know, it kind of makes sense. Like, Theon save Sansa. Sansa essentially saved Theon. He was, he was reek for forever until Sansa showed up. Now he's come home every chance he gets in Winterfell to kind of do something to earn some sort of forgiveness. He does. And Sansa kind of backs him. And they have a couple moments earlier on, you know, like in that war council meeting. And now here you just kind of see him like, all right, Theon. I was like, Theon Greyjoy is back and he got him some eyes for Sansa. Um, and it's interesting that you're just kind of seeing all these people pair up almost in the episodes, uh, these you know these first two episodes, something you didn't think you would see. Um, and now you're heading to a battle where maybe none of them come out. Um, so, look, I, I know it's a little bit slower of a start than I think people were expecting. I think everyone just said, hey, six episodes. Last year was seven episodes. We moved really, really fast. We're going to get right in. We're not going to waste any time. we got to get into it, man. There's so many people at play. Maybe we just have two huge battles you know one in episode six one in episode three um kind of like your your middle and ending bookmarks and you kind of have like some regroups and resets to kind of set it up and when you look at it look last week we reestablished where everybody was we reunited everybody and reintroduced everybody to each other and now this week we get to see them all enjoy their last night together and kind of come up with a game plan getting ready prepping themselves and the, the, the episode while I was watching I was just like this episode is so good because everybody is getting some screen time they're pulling it out in a way where it's not super long I mean the episode is still less than an hour um, but everybody gets screen time and every scene gets enough time to breathe and, and it didn't feel like we were rushing through it it felt like we're building it correctly I said to my buddy I was like if this was a 10 episode season nobody would complain about this episode everybody would talk about how great of a setup this was leading into the battle and now that it's 6 I'm like eh maybe you get people saying that I don't know, no battling at all like not even a little I thought maybe it would be a half and halfer it was a great great setup episode and after seeing the scenes for next week oh man 
this could be the most epic of all of the battle major episodes of Thrones. So I'm super, super psyched for episode three after a rock solid episode two. Those are all my spoiler filled thoughts on episode two, season eight of Game of Thrones. Now I want to know what you're thinking, man. We are two episodes in. Everybody is still alive uh, that we came into the season with. Um, were you surprised by that? Were you surprised that we didn't get any battling? I tell you, the, the, the way they did that trailer last week, I thought we were getting it, but clearly we were just kind of showing what's coming, not exactly what was coming. Uh, so were you thrown off by that? Did you wish we would have gotten to see some action? Or did you like that we got one more night with a lot of our favorite characters? And what was your favorite part of the episode? Uh, what moment really popped? You know, was it that, that war council? Was it Arya, like, just... Taken Gendry. Um, you know, was it was it, you know, getting to see Lady Brienne become Sir Brienne? Oh, that was my favorite moment, man. It got me. Shed a tear. But leave all those thoughts down below, man. Let me know everything you were digging or not digging about the episode. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you want to come be in on all the Seaman Game of Thrones conversations week in, week out, man, every Sunday, right after the episode, I sit down, I record, and I give it to you. You want to be here for that? Go hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell so you get alerts when I drop my Game of Thrones content or any content. Uh, so there you go, man. We've got two in the books. Only four left. God, it's moving so fast. that I'm, I'm not going to cry on camera in front of you other than the one that I already recorded. So I'm getting out of here, man. For the Seaman Cinema, sit down on the Seaman. And I'm signing off. Peace out. Only one more week for a lot of people, I think. Oh, Game of Thrones. Well, well. If you aren't still here, looking for something else to check out that's Seaman related, why don't you check out a video like this guy or this guy? And if you really want to help the Seaman out in year two, hit that subscribe button and come join the cinema sit down squad, kids. You know what to do. See ya.